Psych IRL. My name is Donna and today we're going to be talking about cognitive dissonance theory. So cognitive dissonance theory states inconsistencies in a person's thoughts and actions creates an aversive emotional state or dissonance that leads efforts to restore this consistency. Leon Festinger theorized that humans need consistency in our beliefs, attitudes, and sentiments. And when we hear something that conflicts with them, we experience something called dissonance or discomfort. As a result, we need to somehow reduce that discomfort. For example, I know hot Cheetos aren't really the healthiest snack, but I still eat it and I also want to be healthy. Cognitive dissonance, what do I do? So the first way I can reduce dissonance is to change my behavior. I can stop eating hot Cheetos and therefore be healthier. The second way is I can reduce a belief. So I could say, you know what? Hot Cheetos aren't really that bad. Smoking is probably worse. Therefore, I could still eat hot Cheetos. The third way is to gather information that outweighs the dissonance. And this one deserves an IRL story. So I think these days the media has been so concerned about what gets people views. And as a result, there's this whole divide between civilians and police. I have friends who believe the police can do no wrong. And I also have friends on this side who believe the police are corrupt with power. And in reality, when we see those videos, we know that some of the shootings are justified and some just aren't. So we're going to be talking about a friend on this side and cognitive dissonance. So due to all this media coverage, his beliefs have become strongly on this side. One of those police brutality videos came out and I'm not really gonna talk about which one it was because the point of this video is to talk about cognitive dissonance. It isn't to discuss whether police brutality exists or whether it doesn't. So anyway, one of those videos came on and the cop just shot someone that literally didn't do anything. He was just a bystander. I was shocked and I looked at my friend and saw cognitive dissonance kicking in. Police don't kill people. They're the good guys. This is inconsistent with my beliefs. So to reduce this dissonance, he gathered information that outweighed the dissonance. Well, his hands shouldn't have been near his pockets. He shouldn't have been hanging around in such a bad area. Did we just watch the same video? Another experiment by Carl Smith and Festinger in 1959, 71 people partook in this really boring experiment where they had to take turns turning pegs for an hour or so. Then they were either given $1 or $20 to lie to a stranger and say, hey, this experiment is really fun. Then they had to rate the funness of this experiment on a survey. So who do you guys think rated the experiment as more fun? If you said participants who were paid $20, you're wrong. People who were paid $20 rated this experiment as less fun because they justified that the reason for was that they were paid the $20 and not the fun. People paid $1 on the other hand rated this experiment as more fun because they needed a way to solve their cognitive dissonance about why they lied. Since $1 isn't a justification for lying, they actually reduced the importance of this belief and said, you know what, this actually was more fun than I thought. There's definitely a lot more to cognitive dissonance um, I'm thinking of doing a part two to this video next week, so stay tuned for that. Articles are always down in the description below. I'll see you guys next time. Officially improved. So after a week, would you be convinced that Barbara's character improved? Like, officially improved? It depends on Barbara. <laughs> she didn't improve her.